All right. Hey, here we go. Here we go. Look at that. We got we got somebody writing back. Lady listener. She writes back, fair enough. Oh, this is this woman that I trashed last week when I was in a bad mood. I thought I went too hard on her. I thought I went too hard on a lot of people on my last podcast before the Wolfgang Van Halen one. I was in a bad mood. Um, so then immediately when I get in a bad mood, because of the way I joke around, it just comes off <coughs> a little too, like, harsh. Okay. Um, dear Billiam Burrington, this is the lady who wrote in complaining about your comedy bits that say all women are materialistic. Oh, yeah, I remember you. And you're like, all my friends are beautiful and pay for all their own stuff. And I was actually thinking about that afterwards. It's like, really? Like, how good-looking does somebody have to be to be your friend? You only hang around with good-looking people, you shallow so-and-so? She says, well, fair enough on most of your points. Well, I appreciate that because I agreed with you when you're talking about guys, you know, your women, your girlfriends can't find guys who aren't addicted to porn. And uh, you said something else hilarious. And video games. I was like, fair enough. She said, I agree with you that it's bullshit that holidays only pressured the man to provide gifts slash dinner, et cetera. I think the cost should be shared by both of the people. I think you should both fucking stay home and you should decide when you want to celebrate. Oh, she says, if you want to celebrate. Now look at me, jump in the gun. Uh, I guess it's different if there's a big difference between how much they make, but I haven't experienced that, so I wouldn't know. Now, before I strain myself patting my own back, I will also admit that you are also right about women wanting to know what a man does for a living. Um, I don't want to speak for all women, but I definitely look for someone who is at or near my level of domestic stuff. So it'd be nice to not settle too far. No, that makes sense. It, the whole thing makes sense. Okay, because first of all, when you get knocked up, you're going to be fucking laid up. And you're not going to be able to work or at least work, especially if you're running your own business. Um, you're going to need somebody to step in. So you need to know that, she, that, that the man can provide. Because that's the deal. The guy has to provide and the broad has to give you a baby. That's basically it. So what, at singles bars, women should still be saying, so what do you do for a living, Right. And then guys should say, hey, uh, do, I, do you have the ability to make a baby? Because <laughs> if you're barren, keep it moving. Um, anyway, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, so fair enough on everything. Thanks for roasting me um, on the podcast. I haven't laughed that hard in forever. Look at that. You're a good shit. I like you. All right. Thanks and go fuck yourself, some lady. See that? Why can't more people be like that? Why can't they be like that? And I was in a bad mood and she's still fucking... Thought it was funny. So that's good. All right. Plane or train? All right. Dear Billy, it's a choo-choo train. All right. My friends and I were arguing over whether it'd be better to live on a train or a plane. The train is safer but constricted to the tracks. The plane can go anywhere. But who wants to be on a plane all day? What country would your train, car, house be in if you chose a tra- if you choose train? You got to go train. You got to go train because even if you had the money to have your own 747, like a double decker, like take those ones. If when you go to Europe, it's like it's a two level plane. If you like redid one of those. All right. As big as that would be, I mean, be bigger than your fucking house and everything. You're still you're living on a plane, breathing that awful air, that recycled air. Um, I would absolutely want to, if that's, that's a no brainer, I would, I would pick a train. Um, uh, so I'm assuming you're not allowed. Are you allowed to get off the train? Are you allowed to get off the plane? Um, if I'm traveling for the rest of my life, I'm, I'm taking a train and I'm just going to make my circle small as far as where I will travel to do shows. Um, all right. What country would your train car house be in if you chose train America? I'm an American, man. USA, baby. US fucking A. I'd stick it right in fucking Nebraska. Bored out of my mind. No, I would be, uh, I don't know. I think I would be uh, Pacific Northwest is beautiful. Kind of gives you something to look at. Can I get like a glass like ceiling on the thing so I could look at some shit? I don't know. I would say... Uh, Somewhere between Seattle and Portland, Oregon. I guess that's a quick one. But um, you ever see those people that just sort of fly around trying to get frequent miles, frequent flyer miles and build them up and do all that shit? I mean, 
they act like they're getting over on the airline and it's like you're not you're just you are earning every one of those fucking miles um i just can't imagine all the shit you're missing out on and the fucking sciatic nerve issues and all the stuff you're gonna have you can stretch all you fucking want to there was like people like flying to hong kong and the next day coming right back insane um from america from america all right gold digging dad hey billy dad ass <laughs> <laughs> you are a father and I want to know your opinion on, on how you think this should be handled. For context, I am a female in my late 20s and have an older sister who has the same concerns about our dad, that your dad's a gold digger. Is this your biological father? This feels like one of those fucking Jerry Springer things starting off here. You know what? I need, I need a sip of water here. Um... All right, let's see what we got here. All right, my dad has just gotten engaged to his soon-to-be third wife. Let's call her Sally. Uh, they are around 60 years old, and he's had a bad track record, track record when it comes to relationship. I asked him once, what is it that changes after you get married? Everyone always says after you get married, everyone always says after you get married, things change. So she asked him, what is it that changes after you get married? His answer to this question was, uh, the woman always tries to control you. They think that they own you after you get married. Uh, hey, you know, that's, that's not 100% false. Uh, in, his situation, I think the, in his situation, I think the opposite is true. He has admitted to things here and there that support that. Uh, like when he told my sister, that he wouldn't let my mom go to nursing school when they were together because he liked having her under his thumb, his word. Oh, is this one of these fucking assholes who doesn't like to be controlled but then controls other people? I don't get those people. Um, you would think if you don't like to con be controlled that you would then understand that other people don't either and you would have empathy because you don't even have to put yourself in their shoes because you feel the same way they do. Strange, strange. But I, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I, I knew a lot of people like that. Anyways, he said, and when he also said that he told his last serious girlfriend that he had erectile dysfunction, but really he just didn't find her attractive. Ah, there you go. He has always been super vain and really, easy, really only dates super small women with big tits. <laughs> This dude sounds like a guy's guy from the mid-1970s. Probably still drinks beer with a pull tab. Um, so anyways, he, he, meets, he met Sally several years ago, and they dated for a short time before he broke up with her. He told her that it was because he was scared of falling in love with her. After a year, after about a, about a year ago, sorry, he was talking to my sister about how he started talking to her again, and that... If he married Sally, he would be set for life because she has money. Yeah, he. This is the problem with this guy is he he goes he gets into relationships for wrong reasons, uh, the wrong reasons, money, tits. Those are all dumb reasons to marry somebody. You know, those are good reasons to to fuck around and have a fling. She got big tits. Those would be fun. All right, great. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't I, I don't like mooching off people though. I, I draw the line on money. Uh, anyway, they began dating. He began dating her a few months ago, a few months later, sorry. Uh, they are engaged, and he is chomping at the bit to get the marriage over and done with. Good. I'm glad he's chomping at the bit. She'll probably sense that and call it off, hopefully. My question is, should I bring this up with him and see if he really is in love with her? Should I try and contact her and feel out how things are going with them? I have never even spoken to this woman. Should I just say fuck it if she's dumb enough to get herself into this situation? Then it's on her. I disagree with, they always say that. Well, you're the one who married her. It's like if somebody's lying to you and saying that they love you, you know, how are you supposed to know? Uh, anyway, she has kids and would hope that if they thought it was fishy, they would talk to her about their concerns. If it were my mom, I would be all over her telling her, wait until she really knows what she's getting into. 
Yeah, but if you were her daughter, you know, the guy that she was marrying wouldn't come up to you and say, hey, you know, I'm trying to marry your mother so I can be set financially, you know, huh? Huh? You with me? I'm taking part of your inheritance there, little sweetheart, right? Uh, should I insert myself into the situation or should I leave it be? I've only been close with my dad for a few years when I was a teenager, and since then it's just been a distant relationship. I would really love some advice from you and the lovely Nia if she is available. I'm a huge fan and wish you and your wonderful family the best of luck. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, I would say it all depends on what sort of relationship you want to have with your dad. Because he'll get fucking, he will be fucking livid if he finds out that you fucked this thing up. Um, but it is kind of weird to just stand back and it's just like if, if he's going to take her for money, you know, what about those kids and shit? So... I don't know what to tell you here. Um, you've never talked to her. They're in their 60s. But even then, some people that are just not good at reading people. And if he's just telling her all of this shit. But he said he didn't. He, I don't know. Your dad's a weird dude. He doesn't really say what he's really thinking. He's like, you know, he got erectile dysfunction and then goes like, I, you know, I don't find you attractive. So that wasn't really what was going on. And then he said he broke up with her because he was afraid he was going to fall in love with her. So maybe he's a, he, there's, there could, there's a world where he could be afraid to tell you how much he loves her and missed her when they were broken up. So he's just acting like it's about money or he really is like that. So you have to figure that out considering this guy doesn't seem to be the most honest dude out there. And then... You have to kind of, I mean, there's, there's no, one of my favorite expressions, no good deed goes unpunished. All right. Um, oh, speaking of which, thank you to everybody who watched the Patrice O'Neill documentary, uh, Killing is Easy. If you want to see the full unedited, edited, they had to take 14 minutes out. Uh, it's on ComedyCentral.com. It's on their, their, uh, their website. And I was very, I was thrilled with the feedback that I got from fans of his and especially from other comics. Um, and I'm telling you, it was all Mike Bonfiglio is just a friggin' genius. Um, I feel like, uh, you know, people were giving me too much credit. All I did was he just called me up and was saying, Hey, do you have this con, this comedian? Can you, I'd like to get him in. Can you do that? That's all I did. Like he, I didn't sit in the edit room. He did. He, he put Mike Bonfiglio did the thing. All right, there we go. Okay, uh, boyfriend says I'm getting cankles. Um, wait, did I finish with that? Yeah, so that's what I would do. And I would just, you know, you know, there's ways to do it anonymously. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Personally, I would probably just stay out of it. Uh that's one of those things. It's just one of those fucking things. If you don't know the other person, how do you fucking bridge that gap? And then the other person you're related to, like, how do you call somebody up and say, hey, just let you know, my dad's kind of a selfish asshole. And he said, uh, if he gets with you, he'll be financially all set. I mean, you know what? You pro Maybe you can do it anonymously. Do it anonymously. And then just deny it and just see what the fuck happens. That's, that's the closest thing you could do. But I, I wouldn't insert, maybe there's a way to do it that way. I don't know. All right, boyfriend says I'm getting cankles. Dear Billy Blue, Blue Balls, uh, my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years. When we met, we were both college athletes. He is still very athletic and trim. After 15 years in sports, I've grown tired of fitness and have stopped working out. As a result, I've gained some weight. I've lost my abs, and I have some pudgy baby fat all around my body now. Um, all right, first thing. I think with a lot of athletes, because you train so hard and all of that shit, like you just get burned out. Um, I would suggest finding a new way to train because one of the worst things you can do is let your body go. It, it affects, I mean, you're just putting on your fucking socks. Become Everything just becomes more difficult. You lose energy. You get depressed. You die sooner. Um, staying active is extremely important and, you know, if you did a bunch of running and shit when you were younger, an athlete, I just don't run. Do something else. Get into like cooking in nutritious ways. I would do shit like that, but please don't don't stop. Don't let yourself go because 
there's, there's a tipping point. You can't get it back. Um, anyway, yesterday he pointed out that I'm developing cankles. Google if you need to. I don't. Um, he said most of my weight is going to my legs. He said he noticed them when we initially started dating, but they are very noticeable now. He prefers women with toned muscle, muscular legs and said it's something that secretly bothers him. I admit it, even if I'm trim and in shape, my legs still have baby fat, even around the ankles. It's kind of strange. I think it's genetic. Yeah, I mean, you're literally talking about something you can't help here. He goes, between the cankles and the fact that I'm not working out not anymore, I'm worried he's going to break up with me unless I start hitting the gym. He's a fitness nut, so I can see why he wants to be with an athletic girl, but I also feel like he's being kind of sh- sh- of shallow and an asshole. What do you think? I'm searching surgery to reduce my cankles. Uh, P.S. I think you're sexy with the shaved head. With that said, go fuck yourself. Now, wait a minute. I think you're already looking. You're already mentally sound. I'm kidding. Um, all right. I would say this. You're, you're right. You're both kind of right here. You're right that he's being a shallow asshole. All right? And the fact that he, what he said to you makes you research surgery to reduce your cankle is, is like, that's like heartbreaking. You can't do that to somebody. You can't do that to anybody. Okay? So... First of all, don't do that, all right? But secondly, in his shallow asshole way, he's also bringing up a really important thing, which is you can't let yourself go. You can't do it out of respect for yourself and the person that you're with. You have to be making a fucking effort to stay in shape, okay? And when you're with somebody and they're getting out of shape, it's really difficult to tell them that. So what you have to do is, I, you know, try to work out with them and stuff like that. And and uh, I would just say to the guy, just be like, look, you know, what you said, you were kind of being, a, you know, I understand, you know, there's a point there, but the way you did it really hurt me. And, and I'm literally on the internet, like searching surgery to reduce my, my, my fucking leg fat or whatever. Um, you know, and then, and then just see where it goes from there. If you want to push it further. We can be like, all right, so what? If I put another 15 pounds on, you're just going to break up with me? Does that mean like, you know, so... Because if that's the case, you don't really love me. And then what the fuck am I doing here? Um, so there's sort of the little conversation and, and then sort of the bigger thing that this brings up. Um, so I wouldn't come at him in an angry way, but let's just have an honest conversation here. All right? Let's just have an honest conversation. Okay, I'm going to tell you what what you said to me, how it made me feel. I am going to start working out, but it also made me feel like if I got to a certain weight that you would break up with me. Is is that how you are? And I'm not going to get mad, but just let me know if that's how you are. And then if he says, okay, that is how I am, all right, then I would just make an assessment if, like, he just liked you because you had abs. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot. There's a lot there. And it's only an email, and I don't know anybody involved. But, like, don't, don't fucking get surgery because... Your boyfriend said something stupid. All right? Okay, there we go. But don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on us, baby. Don't give up on yourself. You don't, don't, you're burned out from working out. You can still go for walks. And, and um, eating healthy is delicious, and you feel amazing afterwards. So you just got to, uh, you know, do that shit. Okay. Anyway, girlfriend wears makeup at work to attract attention. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's get into this one here. All right. Dear, uh, cheers, Mr. Burrito. Oh, by the way, to all my Mexican listeners the other night, when I went to the taco truck, I got a torta and I got I got some tacos. Okay? I didn't have the gringo white boy order of the burrito. Although I got to tell you, it was tough to lay off because I am a white boy gringo fucking burrito eating son of a bitch. I am. How do you say in Spanish, you burrito eating son of a bitch? Please, somebody. <laughs> I want to be a yo, yo soy uh, burrito eating son of a bitch. All right. Um, cheers, Mr. Burrito. Uh, love the podcast and all that good stuff. I'll cut right to the chase since I know how hard it is for you to read out loud. Thank you. I appreciate that. See, you have empathy. I like you. All right. Basically, 
My girlfriend, my lady, works at the local pizza shop and dolls herself up in order to get more tips from customers. Hey, you know, that's the hustle. I get that. She's a very beautiful girl, and we've been dating for a little over two years. I love her to death. We've talked about marriage. We agree on the important things and all that shit, blah, blah, blah. We're both in our early 20s and go to university together, and thank God she's not one of those people who's been brainwashed by the university and can think for herself. Nice. Parentheses. So she's special, I think. I think you're right. Anyway, she knows if she puts on makeup and makes herself look cute, she can attract more trips from customers, tips from customers. It'd be one thing if she was poor and needed the money, but her parents have loads of it and made a good amount at her uh, big shot accounting job. But what? But her parents have loads of it and made a good amount at her big shot accounting job over the summer. Oh, she made money. She's 100%, she 100% does not need it and even quit a shift because she was too bored. I feel like she is doing it for the attention and has even said to me that it makes her feel good about herself. At first, I thought this might be a huge issue. At the same time, her friends have become big losers since they all got into relationships and her schoolwork has gotten pretty easy since we're both seniors. Basically, she's, she is bored and I am unable to be 100% attentive to her since I'm still kind of busy and also my friends are not lame. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You sound like a young guy. I get this. All right. Initially, I initially told her she can't wear makeup because she's preying on lonely guys to give her extra money, but then second-guessed myself and now I let her wear it. Anyway, not sure what to do here. I feel like I'm being ridiculous by putting my foot down since, after all, it is mostly harmless, but also it still bothers me. I'd appreciate any advice you have. All right, well, the biggest thing you said there is you owed up to the fact that it bothers you. Okay? So there's ways to say that to somebody by not saying, I forbid you to wear makeup to work. Because, like, first, let, let's be honest here. It bothers you. you. You love her and you don't want to lose her. That is that is the core of it. And, and, and if we're going to be totally honest, you could give a fuck about those lonely guys sitting there. <laughs> you don't care about them. You care about you. You care about your relationship, okay? So um, I think you have a beautiful, motivated person here who made a bunch of money. You even said her big shot accounting job. That makes me see, feel like you have issues about that, too. So I think what you need to do is get a little more confidence here. Get a little more swagger. She's with you. She loves you. She's, you guys are all on the same page about everything. And, uh, you know, you need to listen to a little 38 special here. Hold on loosely, but don't let go. Right? You, gotta, you, get, you can't do this, okay? If she likes going there, I mean, part of it could also be it makes her feel good to be out working, earning money, rather than sitting around on her ass. And... Um, he also took a pot shot at her friends, which I get, you know, at your age and shit. It's just like, you know, they probably want to watch Real Housewives and stuff. And you're kind of like, you know, I want to go do this other shit. Um, you know what I would do? I would uh, try to dial down my insecurity, try to figure out why you feel that way. You know, if you got a little bit of money, go go talk to a therapist or maybe just talk to her. Just, just sit down with her and just say, listen, you know, it bothers me that it bothers me <laughs> that... You wear makeup and I'm too insecure. Too, I'm telling you, women love that shit. They fucking love that shit. It's open communication. They get it, right? And then also in a way, she's like, oh my God, oh my God, you love me that much, right? As opposed to being like, hey, listen, lady, you fucking put that clown shit on your face again. We're going to have fucking problems. Stay home and make me a fucking, yeah, stake them, you know? You can't come at them that way. You'll drive them away. So I think it was really big of you by the end that you said it still bothers you when you you know, you think you're being a little, like, ridiculous. So, um, you know, you, you, you can't keep somebody by trying to, well, I guess you can. If you get, like, a weak person, you can just totally dominate them and not let them go outside anymore. All right. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Yeah, I would, I would, I would ease up on the reins. And I, this, I, this is a you issue. This isn't a her issue. Um... And I think that you can work it out if you sit down and you talk to her and just tell her that you feel ridiculous and whatever, embarrassed that you said what you said, but it came from a place of not wanting to lose you. And just, just do, just tell them what you're thinking. 
I know it's weird at your age, but I'm telling you, it actually fucking works. All right, there you go. Okay, so that is the podcast. I'm going to sit down and watch the Bruins versus the fucking Flyers.